tonight. Hey ho, here I am. And this new cur blog's waiting to begin. Hey everybody, happy July. Uh, I can't believe it's been an entire year since uh, Anime Expo 2015. Um, the day after uh, this one comes out will be uh, a, a whole year since the premiere of uh, the last episode of Tome, Terrain to Magical Expertise at AX uh, last year. And it's, in, it's in incredible. I, I just recently went back and I watched uh, the last episode with the live audience reaction. And um, it, you know, made me cry. <laughs> Start things off with that, I'll say. Um, I'm leaving this subject behind. Uh, I, I have something I want to record while I'm at AX, but I don't know if it'll, if it'll be coming up uh, over the weekend. So I wanted to leave this behind and kind of start off the month with uh, something relatively important. This is another one, uh, like with the previous topic I did, where I'm just kind of hitting the record button. I don't know how long it's going to go on for. Um, but I'm kind of actually t uh, killing two birds with one stone on this one. Uh, this is uh, two different questions. Um, the first one is from an anonymous uh, contributor over Tumblr. Uh, who I asked if I could answer this uh, in the form of a career blog, and uh, they were very kind to allow me to do that, so I've, I've you know, disguised their name. But uh, Anonymous said, Hi, I'm here again with another slightly deep question. I feel like all the stuff that I'm doing is useless. I want to put importance to the things I do, but I feel like nothing will come out of it, even my dreams of becoming an animator. Do you have any advice to get me out of this way of feeling? Also, if you actually do answer this, could you answer it privately? Thanks so much. And they, of course, gave me permission after I asked them to uh, do this in the form of a career blog. The other one that I'm going to answer is uh, from a YouTube comment by Ryoko, uh, sorry, Ryko Master, apologies. Hey, Curb, I really want to know your thoughts on the whole no effort equals success debate that's been going on. I hear a lot of people say that people who don't put effort on their content to make downright shit content shouldn't get millions of views or thousands of subscribers. Do you think no effort should equal success or do you think it should equal failure? I really want your input on this subject. So the reason that I'm answering both of these questions uh, together is not due to lazy, it's a laziness, in fact, but... Uh, due to, I think that they're both kind of in tandem with um, a lot of how my sensibilities have changed as an artist. Um, just to preface before I kind of get into this, uh, number one, I am, to people who are longtime uh, listeners, I'm probably going to be repeating a lot of information on this one. Uh, so I do apologize if you're going to be hearing, you know, repeated stuff over and over. Um, and uh, more importantly, the reason I want to go into this, uh, but both of these topics combined into one subject uh, these two questions come out of one subject, so I should say, um, is because they also have a lot to do with kind of what I've been going through lately. Like, you know, not to get too like, let me air out my dirty laundry to you all, but I, I think it is relevant and important to talk about this stuff openly with you guys. And hopefully, um, you know, kind of what my personal experiences are with this sort of thing will be helpful to uh, to both of you and anybody else listening to this in some way. So, so my desire to create, uh, to be a storyteller. Um, I can't exactly say where it originated from. I think that the, the simplest way is to just, you know, boil it down to I was inspired by what I was watching on TV and the movies and playing games and stuff. And, you know, all of those things collectively were making me want to, uh, you know, to create my own stories. Um, and I think also it had a lot to do with my friends and also my, in the beginning, my lack thereof. Uh, because for a while, um, you know, the only characters I was making uh, were either like, you know, fan characters or uh, characters based on myself, because that was all I had to go off of was me. Um, and it wasn't until I started making friends in school that I began to get inspiration for making new characters because I was learning more and more about people, which is arguably the most important thing that you get out of going to school is that you do learn about yourself as a person. You learn about other people and how everything kind of meshes together. Um, for a long time, I think that the way I was describing my, uh, my drive to want to, you know, then when I, when I started thinking more deeply about what I want to, what do I want to do with my future? What do I want to, you know, do for my career someday is, you know, working in entertainment, um, you know, I think a lot of what I was describing my stuff as is like, oh, it's all in tribute to my friends, uh, you know, and the experiences that all of us have had together and everything and what I learned from them, which is still definitely true. I mean, Tome is a massive, uh, you know, depiction of that, if anything, it, it, it's proof of that, you know, that's what it all is, um, you know, in tribute to. Um, but I think that there was something more to it, and I didn't really know what it was. And then for a while, and this is going to tie into the uh, the secondary question, um, when I started learning how to use Flash, 
uh, and I started making cartoons on Newgrounds, and especially when I did Parody Rangers, and then that was, you know, like one of the big things that I was known for, and then of course came the Nintendo Collabs and the Brawl Taunts trilogy and all that shit. And, um, you know, I got really, as I often describe when I, when I tell that story, I, I got very sidetracked because I was very taken aback by, uh, oh, people are paying attention to what I make now. Oh, I have an audience. Oh, oh, I, I get popular. People appreciate and, and show their appreciation of what I make. Oh, wow. And, oh, my God. And, and even, you know, to a smaller extent, but, oh, man, I, I can make money off of doing this. You know, that, that was certainly a, a factor, but not a major one, to be honest. Um, but, yeah, and, and I was kind of enveloped in that world for a long time. And then, you know, I, I, as, I've, as I've often said in that whole kind of story, I had my a little wake up call and I, you know, realized like, no, I need to, this is, this is a distraction. This isn't really what I, what I want to do. What I really want to do is make original stories, uh, you know, through the medium of animation and storytelling and et cetera, and anything that I can. Um, and, uh, and I'm glad, and I, you know, I managed to kind of break out of that phase and, you know, of course I still do, you know, dabble in that side once in a while. And I'm, I am going to get delve a little bit more into that later, but you know, like, it, for example, the Undertale cartoon, where that just came from, like, I was very inspired to want to make, you know, just a quick little thing in tribute to how much uh, that game experience impacted me. Um, but that's the other thing, too, is, like, when I, when I finished college and, you know, I took the big leap and I decided, okay, I'm going to do a cartoon based on balancing acts, which was, like, my magnum opus IP that I've had since I was like five years old, technically, when literally the only character was myself and an evil version of myself as the villain. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I, I had finally delved back into, okay, I'm going to do original stories. I'm going to tell the stories that I want to make that are all my own characters that I built from the ground up and the satisfaction I get from that. And there is, and I've always been able to describe that easily, is that I get a lot of satisfaction from, uh, from creating in that, in that kind of way. Uh, and that is still absolutely true, and I think that that is incredibly important to go uh, to the first question. Um, but it, it it wasn't, you know, even all the way through Tome, um, you know, I, I didn't know until long after the show was over, uh, you know, the the true kind of like, my, I guess you could say maybe maybe my calling uh, in terms of like why I do it, what what it is that I do. Um, and uh, and it's interesting because and I think I, I think I've probably talked about this before too. I can't remember because I've, I've I've said this to a few different people, but I don't know if I've sent it in a curve blog yet. So you know, I'm just thought barfing at the moment. Um, but uh, you know, because Tome is a story, as I realized way later, after I'd finished it, is that it is a story about trust. Um, obviously, yes, it is in tribute to the friends that I made on the internet with Mike Lucas back in the early 2000s when he moved away and that whole story, that is true. And I loved getting to do, you know, the entire process of making it. And, and I, I think I've, I forget if I've said this, but, but also, so, I, I think I probably did recently, but, but self-indulgently, like the continuation of Tome was motivated by like the idea of like me wanting to, um, me wanting to, uh, uh, do a bunch of cool moments with Zeto and feel cool, you know, in in performing and animating him, uh, you know, which again is completely self indulgent. Um, but that was, I think that was that was like a back of my head type of you know motivator for continuing it, um, you know, beyond where I started and everything. Um, but yeah, I, the bottom line is Tome. I, I realized, and I'll I'll try to talk about this without spoiling everything in case you guys listening haven't seen it. But um, it's a story about trust, and especially in the case of Alpha and Zeto representing the two different sides of that, um, you know, in that Alpha it was very naive and he was too openly trusting to everybody and it hurt him in, in how the virus took a hold of him and was manipulating him and hurting everybody around him in the, in the process. And Zeto was very distrusting to everybody, including his own friends, uh, that he could have and should have trusted with, you know, this major issue that he was too, you know, he was too distrusting to want to let anybody else aside from like Kizuna and you know, somebody else, so I won't say, uh, you know, help him on it because of, you know, how he went about his life. And it isn't until those two characters begin to trust each other that things change. And if, you know, if you know how the series goes, then you know what that means. So, you know, that was something that was integrated into it very, um, you know, very subconsciously because it wasn't something that I was, I was thinking so much at the forefront. And, you know, because of that may not have been as strong of a story as it could have if I knew that ahead of time. And, um, 
Now, now, what this has to do with is, and, and how the, you know, the kind of next part of this whole chronicle of me, this, I'm getting to a point with all this, but, you know, bear with me, guys. I, again, I'm hitting, the, I'm hitting the record button. I don't know how long this is going to go for. So just, you know, you're, you're in for however long this ride is going to be. Um, back in uh, November of this year, um, I went through some, some personal issues. Not going to get into the details, but I was depressed for about four months and was very, very, very down on myself, and uh, I wasn't, I was very lost. Um, you know, for one thing, uh, aside from the actual stuff that had happened at the time, I was already kind of scared about, I don't know what's going to happen next, because by that point, I had been buying myself some time by uh, going up until November after, you know, last year, this time, uh, when we had finished releasing the last episode and the show was over, I was buying myself some time with the uh, behind-the-scenes uh, extra stuff that had been coming out uh, with the episodes for the first several months by that point. And, uh, you know, and, and then I was hoping that by that time I would have something substantial to, you know, um, to, to fully invest myself into in terms of like a big project. And I've talked a lot about that on, uh, you know, the what is Curb up to like general update video thing that came out a little while ago. And, uh, and then after that, I was, I was very lost for a while. I went back home. Uh, I, you know, I probably fooled a fair bit of you, uh, you know, with the curb logs I was continuing to produce, you know, by that point, um, and, you know, keeping a, you know, the illusion of that everything was fine, when in reality I was not doing well at that point, um, and I was doing Poke Sember, and actually it's funny, because in the note of Poke Sember, this is actually kind of a key part of the story, so I was playing uh, my copy of Pokemon Omega Ruby, which I'm sure I'd mentioned during those curb logs uh, during during that month, um, and uh, I, I hadn't played Pokemon Ruby and Sapphire at all for years and like since the original game came out on GBA and when I was playing through it um, I finished the main like single-player campaign Excuse me throughout the course of uh, the ten days or so that I was gone visiting New York and uh, When I got close to the end this isn't really a spoiler because I mean obviously the Pokemon plots are pretty simple but um, there's a scene where the main villain of the single-player campaign realizes they, they have a uh, you know what have I done? Oh my God, I'm an awful person uh, type of, um, you know, existential crisis, I guess. And, uh, you know, they, they're like giving up on life and not, not like they're, you know, they're, they weren't like being suicidal necessarily, but they were like, oh, there's nothing I could ever do to make up for what I've done, for how awful, you know, for all these sins I've committed, etc. But, you know, so, and, and they're, they're being very dire in the situation. And then their second in command character says, no, this is well that's exactly the reason why you should work for the rest of your life to do better to not only atone for what it is that you've done but to be a better person to to you know learn from your mistakes and you know and make the world a better place uh, in retribution for these mistakes that you've made and i know that that maybe to a, a lot of people that would seem very trite um for for me to be you know so like impacted by that but it wasn't that that moment when I when I watched that cutscene in that game, it was you know I was still very down for a long time after that. Uh, you know I was definitely on a, on a, but 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 I was on a bit of a I was on a bit of a more positive path uh, back to feeling okay about myself again. And uh, it wasn't until you know kind of part way through I think February or so that I was like back in you know a much better place. And I've been I've been much better now. Um, now the the current issues that I'm facing, which I will get into later, uh, are are on a much much smaller scale than that. Um, but anyway, I digress. Um, the point is that so that moment when I was playing through that Pokemon game and I was experiencing that cutscene um, was really important because it it not only was very relevant to what I was going through at the time, but uh, much more importantly, it it made me really step back more so than I think I ever had before and realize exactly why I do what it is that I do. Uh, not just for enjoyment's sake, not just for being self-indulgent, not just for having fun. What is the real core reason at the end of the day? Why do I do this? And it was exactly what had happened right then and there where I had played games like Pokemon, watched TV shows like whatever and movies like whatever, et cetera, and, and books, you know, comics, anything. <laughs> that left a very positive and important impact on me uh, in terms of like, I took something away from it. I learned a lesson from that. Um, and, and that's when, when I, when I finally, when that, when that hit me from, from that little, that, that little cutscene in, in this Pokemon game, I finally realized, of course, this, 
this is the reason why. And then I had a conversation with uh, the lovely Jake Gantz of uh, Studio Yada, who I've known since my Newgrounds days. And it's funny because I was meeting him when I was kind of on the cusp of like, no, I need to, I need to stop with this parody shit already. And I need to get back into doing original stuff like I always wanted to. And he was a major supporter of that. And Jake, if you're listening, I don't know if you're, you're ever going to hear this, but you're a great guy. And thanks for being so supportive all that time. Um, but uh, yeah, I had a talk with him shortly after that happened. And, um, you know, it was a very nice eye-opening experience. And I came back home. And, um, and then what I decided to focus on, and what I have been focusing on now that we're at the just about the halfway point. Uh, no, actually, no, we were past the halfway point by the time this is coming out. I'm recording this uh, on, the, on the 29th, and this will be going up on... Uh, July 2nd, uh, while I'm at Anime Expo. Anyway, um, we're, we're, we're over halfway through 2016. And my goal for this year, uh, as I was saying in my, um, uh, my, my New Year's resolution video at the beginning, was uh, I wanted to do better. I wanted to be better. I wanted to push myself to get better. Um, and, you know, that was my, that was in a way, that, that was kind of my New Year's resolution for, uh, I think, for 2015. Um, but... It's, it's even more so this time, and it has not been easy, and I'm realizing that lately because in the last month in particular, I have been very, very, very frustrated lately, and some of you have probably, if you follow me on Twitter, maybe you've seen me like once in a while kind of like venting my frustration of how like pissed off I've been and, and everything, you know. Um, to go to uh, the second question about the effort versus uh, you know, success kind of thing, um, a lot of you guys probably know out there that I do have strong opinions about, um, a lot of content creation with, uh, you know, how the way that, that YouTube is, and not even YouTube specifically, but just the internet in general, YouTube is kind of at the forefront of it just because of it's the biggest platform for people. But yeah, I, I get very frustrated over, you know, a lot of this type of, um, content that I think that is less than, I don't know that then that I feel like isn't isn't raising the bar it's just kind of like whatever like I I I don't generally enjoy let's plays I'm kind of sick of most review shows um you know and there are I know that there are exceptions I know that there are people within that kind of vein um you know who uh uh you know who are very talented and very entertaining and who I still enjoy the work of you know I, I can think of a few off the top of my head um but but overall, and even like you know, animation. There's there's very little that happens. Um, you know, I feel like, and and I don't blame people for this. It's just because I get that this is kind of the model is that a lot of people, you know, do parodies so that they can drive more traffic to, uh, you know, their channels, and then you know, hopefully, then try to work on more original stuff. But it, it's the original stuff that, other, that that people try to do is is I feel like it's so few and far between. Um, you know, which, and that's just, there's nothing I can really do about that other than, other than just, you know, try to put the message out there of like, Hey, everybody like try to do something different. Like, you know, if, if you have an original idea, like just fuck it, do that. You know, like don't, don't, don't wait or don't be distracted. Like I was for a while, you know, but, but again, I, I understand why people do that. And also like, I've been reminded with the undertale thing recently. It's like, I, I understand that sometimes you just got to scratch the creative itch of like when people want to draw fan art, when people want to do you know, fan productions or whatever, you know, I, I understand that. I get the itch. I, I can't remember if I've said this and, I, and if I haven't, then I feel like I'm probably going to put myself in a, in an interesting spot if I put this out here, but fuck it, whatever. Um, one of the projects that I would love to do if I got like some kind of go ahead from Nintendo and I don't know exactly how their whole like YouTube, like partnership thing works or whatever, but I wanted to do an audio adaptation of Super Mario RPG Legends of the Seven Stars with my big giant pool of voiceover actors and do that and do it like well, like set to gameplay footage and everything. In fact, I was even in talks with the person who could record the footage in the first place uh, to do it that way. And, you know, maybe maybe someday if I get like some time where I'm really not doing anything or whatever, like maybe, but it's so low priority compared to the more important things that I need to be focusing on so that I can do the things that I really want to do that are far more important than that. Um, so it's part of the reason why I see, I know I'm putting myself in a bad place because I know a lot of comments are probably gonna be like, oh, I wanna see that and I appreciate that and I would love to do that too. But I also have to temper myself. I had to temper myself with that because I look at them like, okay, literally it's a let's play fan dub. Like, that's the most, like, 
fan wank bullshit I could ever make, you know, like the, compared to even anything I ever did on Newgrounds. And it would be fun and I would, I would enjoy it and I'm sure people would like it and everything, but that also goes back to the bit about effort versus success. Granted, it would still require effort to go about doing it well, but it, and, and it's, but its success would be built off of, you know, the actors that I use and, you know, more prominently, the content that I didn't create, a game that was brilliantly crafted by a whole team of people in Japan, you know, what, 15, 20 years ago by this one? I don't even know how old the game is, for Christ's sake. Um, yeah, so like, and, and then meanwhile, I think about like, no, what is the real thing that I want to be doing next? You know, and which of which there are many. Um, the most prominent things are balancing act, which I am not ready to be doing, and I've talked about that many times as well, where I want to be at a certain skill level and I'm studying a lot of film, which, to, and this is a tandem with these things too. Um, is uh, you know I, I'm trying to st to in in kind of tandem with my my 2016 New Year's resolution is I'm trying to to you know and trying to push myself to do better is I'm trying to study and so so that I can get better I'm doing a lot of different things in order to push myself hopefully to the next level of skill in terms of my storytelling I'm watching a lot more movies and studying a lot more different types of stories and uh, getting a lot of different things out of that as much as I possibly can. Um, of which I've been very thankful to have a lot of friends uh, watching through a bunch of them with me that I have on a little list that I'm going through and everything, which has been really cool. Um, and then in terms of uh, the visuals, uh, I um, obviously I'm, I'm in the middle of the 10-week storyboard class. I've just finished, I think, the third or fourth week so far. So I'm close to the halfway point on that. We're taking a break for uh, the 4th of July weekend right now. And uh, to describe my experience with that, um, the teacher has been fantastic. Uh, he's been very helpful. Uh, really engaging, a lot of really, really good uh, advice, and uh, he's very experienced. Uh, it's been a really good um, experience so far that I've had. Um, the beginning of it, I was very, very frustrated. The beginning of this year, uh, before I was doing this class, because I was trying to take this earlier and I kept missing the spot for it, uh, my, my, uh, my friend Crystal Can, uh, who's a great artist, um, she recommended it to me because she took it, and now she's working in the industry uh, as a storyboard artist, uh, which is awesome. She's super talented. And um, when I was uh, beginning the year off, I wanted to make a real storyboard portfolio so that I could try to push harder into getting a studio job of some kind and start actually working in the industry and knowing what it's actually like to work on a real show uh, or a real movie or a real game or whatever, you know. And uh, so I started working on a storyboard portfolio, which is part of where the Andy the Frog cartoon actually came from. Uh, I've been thinking about doing that for a while, but that was something that I decided to uh, to just use as, as an example of, in, in that case. And then shortly after that, I was like, eh, fuck it, I'll animate it, and then got that done a lot quicker than I thought. And actually, another, uh, here's a little tease for you all, if, you know, if you've gotten this far. Um, one of the other um, uh, storyboard portfolio pieces that I was working on that I want, uh, that, that I had in there, uh, is actually a new short that I'm working on right now. And I'm trying to really pace myself on it and do like, one shot of animation on it per day uh, so that I really take my time and make it as good looking as possible, um, you know, and really have it be something special looking and, and not just like another cartoon or whatever. Uh, but yeah, that aside, um, I, uh, yeah, so I started working on those and I had uh, some great feedback from Crystal and Jake, who I both mentioned now. Um, so, I'd, and big thanks to them. They were, they were great. Uh, yeah, I, um, I started working on those and, you know, that was like the beginning of the year. That was like, Within February, March, I'd finished that. But as you can see, the job opportunities aren't exactly happening overnight, um, which, you know, is fair enough. I can't expect that. And, and you know, the reality is, is because I'm not strong enough in storyboarding to be getting jobs yet. Um, I'm not at that skill level. So, which is part of the reason why I'm taking the class. Now, skipping back to now, um, the, uh, I was saying before, the beginning of the class was really frustrating for me personally, not because of the class itself, uh, but because of my own self-doubt and the walls that I was hitting. Um, I, on my first assignment, I did two entire passes of the whole thing from the ground up because I was so like agitated with the first pass. I didn't look at it and I was like, this is awful. I suck at this. I'm terrified. And I still have a little bit of this fear, but I've been, it's been lessened, thankfully. But I had this fear of like, I'm going to get to the end of these, of these 10 weeks and I'm going to find out that I'm not meant to be doing this and I'm not good at it. And I'm going to be like, great. I moved out here for fucking nothing. Um, and I know a lot of people, you hear that and you're going to think, oh, but all the voice acting stuff you've done and all the cartoons you've made. I moved here to work in the animation industry primarily. Obviously, yes, on, the, on a side note, I am also learning a lot more about games. 
Um, and that is something that I, that I definitely want to get into as well. But primarily, I, I moved here, you know, actually on a more general description, I moved here to push myself to the next level of my career because there was nothing in New York really for me to be doing in terms of like my, my overall goals, uh, which are to create bigger and better stuff than what I've done before. Um, and I, I said this a little bit in the, in the general question curb blog about like, why don't you do Tom season three? And the main reason is because again, I don't think that if I do that, it's going to progress me as much as an artist as I want to. I think that if I just spend another year doing another, you know, season's worth of episodes or whatever, I am not going to grow in the way that I want. And even though I did grow more overdoing Tome, it wasn't to the extent that I needed to be at. Uh, and it was, you know, that was four years of my life that I spent on that, you know? And, and we're now coming up on almost a fifth year by the time we get to November, you know? And, and, I'm, and I've been out here for now two weeks, uh, two weeks, Jesus Christ. I've been living in California for two weeks, guys, didn't you know? No, I've been living here now for two years and I don't know if I'm close. I don't even know. I have no clue. And I've had votes of confidence from a lot of people, uh, including all of you guys listening and a lot of my friends and colleagues, which I'm very, very happy about. And I really appreciate it. And I'm glad that I have a support system like that. But yeah, I did that first homework assignment and I'm just like, oh my God, this is terrible. I don't know what I'm doing. I did that. The second assignment was a storyboard revisionist uh, assignment, which is uh, a kind of a starting position in the animation world. Um, for when you work on a show. I did that, felt a little bit better about it. And then the third uh, most recent, well, my most recent homework assignment I haven't started on yet. I, we have two weeks for that since we're taking off for 4th of July weekend um, is, is bigger. But the one before this uh, was a shorter scene and I was figuring out Photoshop a lot more doing it that way. And I was feeling a lot better about it. I'm like, okay, this is, this is in a bit of a better direction. I like this, okay. Um, so I'm feeling better about it. But overall, my frustration has been from impatience because I want to get back to doing what it is that you guys want, which is making cartoons and making media of some kind and, and no, telling stories and, and accomplishing what I realized back in, you know, just by the end of, of last year, why I'm doing it, making stories that will have as positive of an impact on all of you as possible. Like that is what is important to me is like, because and this goes back to the first question again, feeling like what you're doing is useless. Um, I, I was terrified. I, I'm still terrified that what I'm doing is useless. And I don't know if I'll ever be good enough. I don't know. I have no fucking clue. And it's really frustrating. And it's because I'm like, I'm impatient. I want to jump into doing something immediately. I dream about fucking doing the balancing act movie tomorrow. I think about it all the time, but I'm not ready yet. And there's other things that I should be doing leading up to that, that I can get better on the way to, you know? And, and, and the, 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 the importance of everything that you do, even though it feels like nothing's gonna come out of it, uh, is that everything needs to be a stepping stone. Everything needs to be a learning experience. I've always said that for years and years, even before I did Tome, I was saying that everything I do is an exercise. It's all about, getting better so that the next thing will be bigger and better. Um, you know, and the other thing is this, this kind of ties in with, with both, with uh, both questions a little bit is I want to be motivated for the right reasons. Um, something that I get really frustrated with about, uh, with aspiring any things. I mean, I see it a lot with voice actors, but I, I, I also see it a lot with like just, you know, artists and, you know, content creators or whatever. I think a lot of people get motivated for the wrong reasons and, you know, who am I to judge? But in, in, my, in my eyes, the wrong reasons are um, stuff like, oh, I want to be famous. Oh, I want to make a shit ton of money. Oh, I want to, I want to like, you know, I want to, I want to get self-indulgence out of this. I want to, I want to, you know, get lots of fans. I want to whatever. I want to be super well known. I, you know, to me, those are the wrong reasons. And, you know, if that's what motivates you, then I mean, I, I can't do anything to change that. And, you know, you have to be the one that changes that yourself. Um, and, you know, even though I was, I was enveloped in that, you know, that time on Newgrounds where like I was thinking so much about those kind of things, 
it, it was what I really wanted to do before that that motivated me to eventually get out of it and back into this. And now the most recent revelations that I've been having in the past year or so about myself as a person and as an artist, of course, um, are what are allowing me to hopefully focus more intensely on what is important, um, you know, which, as I said, is to do, do better, to go bigger and better, and most importantly, to have the messages and the morals and the themes and the impact that I leave on all of you who, you know, spend any of your time experiencing anything that I work on, that I put out for anybody to, to listen to and to watch, to be as positive as possible. And to go back to the second question, part of why I'm trying to push myself so hard and why I'm being so hard on myself is because I don't want to put in the minimal amount of effort. You know, I don't want to just make more tome quality shit and just call it a fucking day. I want it to be worth it. You know, I, 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 want, to, I want to evolve. I want to evolve so that I can do better and give all of you something better. That is incredibly important to me because I don't want to just rest on, eh, this is good enough, fuck it. Good enough isn't good enough. There's no such thing as that, you know? When I'm at the level that I can get to doing balancing act, I'll know and I'll be ready. And when that time comes, I'll be on cloud fucking nine. When I'm at the, the point, uh, you know, where I can do whatever is in between that, I'll know. Um, it might be one of the other projects that I've been alluding to, you know, that has to do with other people, me having to work with them to do it in the first place. It might be me working on somebody else's major project. It might be hopefully getting a, a studio job, which I would love to do. I would really, really love to get that this year if possible. I don't know. I'm, I, I'm still, like I said, I'm terrified to find out that and, and that, that I'm going to feel like, which is why I'm already, you know, being self-defeatist and that's not good that like, oh, what I'm doing right now is useless because what it's going to end up being is useless. I mean, I'm not going to be good enough by the end of this class and et cetera. And I also have to remind myself, no, I may not be, but that doesn't mean it's the end. I have to keep pushing myself to do better. I have to do more. I have to put more effort and time into making whatever is next better. So to get off the, <laughs> the, the train of this therapy session to you all. Um, addressing the actual question to the second one. Um, look, my, my, my mentality is I do think that, that effort should equal success. Unfortunately, it doesn't, uh, at least not on the internet necessarily. Um, but I think that it is important for the sake of the first question, which is your motivation. Um, I think that there, look, th there's value to everything that we do. Um, there, there is value in art for the sake of art. That's why I, when I, when I talk about like, you know, being motivated for the right reasons. And again, I know I, I, you know, who am I to judge that? But it, the bottom line is it should be about your passion. You know, it, it's not supposed to be, it's not supposed to be the end result and what you get out of it necessarily. You know, the, the passion is what you get out of it. You know, like it, it's, it's that, but also I think for, I think it's important and it's, and it's, I mean, I say it's healthy, you know, it's not easy. So in that way, it's not always healthy because, you know, it requires a lot of fucking work. Um, but you know, it, if you, if you do it healthily by being smart about it, then it can be very much so. Um, but yeah, I think that pushing yourself to do better, challenging yourself, uh, is extremely important. It's not always going to get you out of that feeling. And I, you know, what I'm telling you right now, what I spent the first fucking 25 minutes explaining in this, um, you know, is proof of that. It's not always going to make that feeling go away. Um, but I think that you need to constantly remind yourself. And you know what? I, I am very often reminded, even by recording this right now, I'm reminded. And, and even by, you know, animating on this short, which is part of the reason why also I decided, you know what, fuck it, I'm going to make it because why not? Um, cause I'm just like, you know, I need to occupy myself with something, with some kind of project in addition to, you know, my voiceover work and, and my classes and, and, you know, whatever, and the other avenues I'm kind of pursuing and the waiting games I'm playing. I need to be fucking creating something. So I'm going to, I'm going to do this short. Sure. Why not? You know, so there's that. And that's also honing, hopefully my animation skills in some way. But, um, but yeah, it, it, that's, that's, that's a, that's a small part, you know? And, um, it, but the, the, it, it's most important that rather that's, that's a small like example, like in the moment right now, but, um, it's, it's, it's important 
to challenge yourself so that everything, because then by doing that, even though, you know, on one hand it's like, oh, but good enough isn't good enough and you're never going to, you know, you're always going to be dissatisfied or whatever. I think, I think that that's not always true. I think that like when you do, when you do have proof of the fact that like you're improving, you know, when I get a, a job of some kind, like it, and when, I, when I say that, I mean like the stuff that I've gotten to do, like freelance jobs, um, you know, of, of, of all across the board, um, you know, I, I feel really good because it's like, yes, I'm, I'm showing that I'm capable. I, I'm showing to others and to myself, more importantly, that I'm capable and that I'm doing better. Um, you know, do I still get impatient about like, you know, oh, like, do I still feel like what I'm doing isn't amounting to much of anything? You know, sure, that's going to happen. We're fucking human. And especially, and further, not only we're human, we're fucking artists, <laughs> you know? <laughs> um, and, and we all want in some way, uh, you know, a little bit of like, uh, what's the word? Uh, a little bit of vindication, I guess, you know, to know that like we're, we're going on the right path. And sometimes it's hard to know because when you don't get approval from others, if you don't feel good about your own stuff, then it's like, it's hard to know what the fuck that even is. In your question, you put how you want to put importance into the thing that you do. The importance that I put into my creations are the messages and the morals that will hopefully leave a positive impact on everybody who invest their time and an effort and emotions into the experience that they get out of watching my work out of my out of my stories out of listening to what I, what it is that I have to say through my storytelling um, the importance that I put into my work my my studying my craft are to be able to do the first one better and, 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 to, and to deliver something that is even more impactful than whatever it is I did previously. Um, so, you know, what I, what I often have to remind myself is like, you know, with, with this class is like the importance I'm putting into it is like, this is hopefully going to make me a better cinematographer, a better storyboard artist to, to know, you know, what I can do better, which will hopefully lead to me maybe getting a studio job so I can, you know, then the importance I can put into that experience is learning how to work in an environment with a lot of different people on, you know, a massive production that is not my own, uh, which to a small extent, I, I learn from the game projects I'm involved with, like, like, like Cryomore, which I learn, you know, great things about and being with, with such a great, you know, team environment because everybody on that team is amazing. Um, you know, and, and what am I, the importance I'm putting into studying more films so that the stories that I do will, will have more, you know, will have more clarity on their themes and, you know, more in-depth characters you know, all these things that I'm doing, what, you know, even to a, a smaller extent, like when I put work into being a better actor so that, you know, when I am acting in other, you know, projects that are not my own or, or in some cases my own too, because I'm self-indulgent and I put myself in all my own shit, of course, uh, you know, I want to give a better performance, you know, and be proud of it. And, and thankfully, you know, much like how I, you know, I'm, I'm, there are moments that, and this is also goes back to, you know, it, it is worth it, even though like, you know, you're still going to have those moments of like, and that kind of general feeling of, oh, you know, I have to do better, I have to do better. You can still look back on stuff and be proud of things. I'm proud of, even though Tome is extremely fucking flawed, it is not groundbreaking, but I'm incredibly proud of what I got to do with it so far and how many people love it for what it is. And, got, and more importantly, that they got something out of it. I'm proud of my performances in stuff like Tales of Zestiria and Gundam The Origin, um, you know, and Pokemon even to, to, to a different kind of way. Um, you know, I'm, I'm proud of what I get to do for other people's projects, you know, what, what I've gotten to do in some small way on Skullgirls and, and you know, on Cryomore, on A Hat in Time and all these different things. Um, you know, those are the things I look back on and, and that's what makes, you know, what is sometimes a frustrating road worth it. Um, you know, it's not always going to be fun. It's, it's not always going to be fun a hundred percent of the time. And it, it's why often I have to remind myself, and this is why I'm, I'm very, I, I, I have to step back and be appreciative because again, I'm not depressed right now. I'm not in a bad place. Like I was, uh, you know, at the end of last year to the beginning of this year, um, life is pretty good. And, you know, I'm still able again, very, very much thanks to all of you for the most part, um, I'm able to make a living off of what it is that I do. And that is extremely important. Um, 
and uh, you know, and, and so everything is fine with me. Like I am, I'm okay. For those any and all who are worried that are listening to this for forty fucking minutes, and be like, oh, is he okay? Is he gonna be all right? He seems like really sad. I'm fine. At worst, I'm just frustrated with a lot of things and I'm feeling impatient and then there's a lot of things that I want to just do tomorrow and I can't yet, but that's why I'm at the very least, I'm glad that the, the, the class is, is going well. It's, it's getting better. I'm doing this short, which I'm feeling pretty good about so far. Um, you know, and, but don't feel bad about being burnt out once in a while. Don't feel bad about taking a break, but the importance that you can put into these things, the effort that you can put in, even if it's not always going to equate to immediate success, it still has value to your overall life and your improvement as not only a, as an artist, no matter any of you all out there, even anybody who you know out there listening to this, if you're not an artist or a creative person of any kind, just the effort that you put into being a better person Again, it's not always going to equate to success. It's not always going to equate to immediate satisfaction, but it's important. It has value to it. That is the important, the importance, the effort that you put in to everything, to be a better person, to be the, a better version of you the next day than you were the day before. It is all extremely important in the long run. It's all part of the circle of life, and it moves us all. How many fucking curve locks do I have Disney movie lyrics in? <laughs> and yet I didn't open this one with that, did I? Um, I think that's kind of all I have left to say. I, I really hope, and I mean this, I really hope that I answered this question as best as I could. Um, I, again, I just kind of hit the button and, and you know let whatever came out came out. I hope that this was all relevant and important and, and made sense and was helpful in any way uh, to both of you listening. Um, I think that's going to wrap this up. So uh, in the comments below, um, anybody else who I'm sure all of you at some point have experienced something akin to this, please, if you're, if you know, if you want, uh, share your own stories and experiences, um, particularly for the, the, the people who ask these questions, um, if, you know, they can read what it is that you have to say and hopefully get something further out of it as well, uh, in addition to hopefully, you know, whatever may have been helpful from, uh, you know, what I've said for the past 40 minutes. Um, yeah, thank you, both of you who asked these questions. Uh, thank you for submitting those. Thank you for listening. I hope that this helped. Again, I can't say that enough, but I will say it multiple billion times. No, no, I'm done. I won't do that anymore. Anyway, <laughs> anyway uh, yeah, I'm away at Anime Expo. Hopefully, I've uh, run into some of you all, uh, and I'll maybe I'll talk a little bit about that on the next career blog. I don't know what will be coming after this. Uh, I might even actually have to do another one ahead of time. I might do like one about the Voltron show or something, just so I have one ahead of time because Monday is going to be busy and I won't have much other time to, to record stuff. So yeah. Um, but yeah, thank you for all for listening again. Hope this was, this was helpful. I did it one more time there. I lied, whatever. Anyway, <laughs> I'm fucking rambling. Thank you. Good night. Good day. Good, good, good.